I have moved out to LA for music and everything else, but my journey started a long time ago. <laughs> um, I practically, before I could talk, I was singing. It was just something that I would hear music and like my eyes would just light up. Like I was in a candy store or something. <laughs> and I started singing around bars in Philly when I was probably like five years old. And I was singing, you know, like Aretha Franklin <laughs> and all those good stuff. Um, and then I started doing musical theater and I kind of progressed into my own lane of music and the things that I wanted because I had grown up on so many different styles and genres. Um, and then when I was about 12 years old, I had sang at the Apollo Theater and completely blacked out. Like, I fully don't remember what I did. I don't remember anything because it was just one of those moments where, like, it's that moment when you're like, okay, this is what I need to do. This, like, I don't know why I'm wasting my time doing anything else. Because it was just, I finished and I was like, I don't know what I did. But I knew it was good. I knew I did something right. And then literally like a year later, I was moving to LA. And then I started doing some stuff for Disney. They brought back the Mickey Mouse Club from the 90s. And I participated in that. And then a few months after, I had signed with Hitco. Um... And it's just, it's been a long journey and it's great. And I love writing and that's my favorite thing. I've been in the studio like every day just because, you know, there's a lot that I want to say. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Thank you. It's kind of got you away a little bit. Uh, you grew up in Philly. Yeah. You, you, it wasn't too long ago you left Philly. So talk, talk about like, like your journey uh, growing up in Philly and you have family there. Okay, so I'm Italian, if you couldn't tell by the last name. And I have this crazy huge Italian family. Like we're all like your stereotypical crazy Italian family. That is literally what I grew up with every Sunday, you know, going to grandma's for some pasta and gravy, all that stuff. And uh, it's crazy that, you know, like coming here, the, the difference between, you know, what I grew up with and what I knew and what I came like, you know, I always thought like, you know, family, family is family. And then I came here and I'm like, you don't talk to your sister. What? <laughs> like, what? And it's just crazy things of like, you know, not, Everybody has that same life that you grew up with. And I grew up in a small town that was also big at the same time. But I discovered a lot of things when I came here because it was just one of those things of like, wow, people aren't always going to tell you how they feel to your face. OK, cool. And, you know, growing up, especially like through my high school, like it was it was definitely an adjustment. But I mean, I loved it. And, you know, what's uh, the best Italian restaurant? In Philly, my grandma's house. Yeah, I, I, I was going to hope you said that. I was like, yeah, if I said anything else, right. I'd be lying. What's your uh, favorite Italian dish? Ooh, penne vodka. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, no, I, I would say that's my favorite. But if she's making it, I'd probably say, like, like the signature, like, ravioli and gnocchis are, like, fire. And her meatballs are great, too. But How often do you go back to Philly? I'd probably go back once a year if I can <laughs> but um it's one of those things that like I love Philly and I love the city because obviously it raised me but I don't plan on going back very often <laughs> no it's cool it's just the opportunities in LA they, you know they're different so like when I get a break and when I need to like recharge and feel like amped up and like myself again that's that's where I run to right. you did some acting too what you still do we talked yeah. about that a little bit because uh, you, you said in a second ago that the reboot of the Mickey Mouse Club is more of an online version that really centered around music. Um, when you got that call, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, so the craziest story with Club Mickey Mouse is that, so I have an acting agent, but I'd gotten this email, like my mom got this email, and it was like, yeah, we want to bring Brianna in, straight to callbacks, blah, 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 producer session, and I'm like, this is a joke. It has a little Disney thing at the bottom of the email. I'm like, Mom, it's scammed. Don't even worry about it. She's like, well, just send it to the agents just to see. And I'm like, but why would they reach out to you? Because, you know, it usually goes to the agent. My mom sends it, and they're like, no, no, you have to go on the audition. They are bringing you back. And, like, started freaking out. And I was like, okay, cool. And so um, I went to the audition, to the producer session. And, like, after that, I don't know what was going on in the universe, but everywhere I went, I would see a Mickey Mouse denim jacket. I was walking past the Disney store and it's like Disney was just everywhere. And then literally three days later, I got the call that I had booked it, which which was, it was a great experience. And I got to, you know, be on set, film some music videos and interact with a bunch of other kids that were insanely talented beyond their years. And yeah, it was a great experience. Well, she uh, auditioned on The Voice, but she got, 
who got turned down by Christina Aguilera. That's what I read. Yep. What was that experience? Twice. What was that experience? Twice. No, it's not. It's it's one of those things where like I look back now and like I was mature like for my age. Like I mean, I was 14 or 15 when I auditioned, so I was still relatively like on the younger side of the teen scale, but like I look back and I'm like it wouldn't have been the right timing if I had gone through, you know, or if I had gone past the blinds. It was just one of those things that just wasn't meant to happen because literally 3 months later was when Disney hit me and I was like Yo, I did. <laughs> it all worked out, you know, but it was it was a great experience. And obviously they gave amazing feedback and they were all extremely nice and like even more beautiful in person, which you don't think is possible because you look on the TV and you're like, they're not that cute. And then you go there and you're like, oh, my God, look at all of them. <laughs> they look just like the TV is crazy. But uh, no, it was a great experience. Which was different than the second, uh, uh, first time or second. Uh, first time it was Christina. Pharrell, Adam, and Blake. And then the second time, it was Alicia Keys, Miley Cyrus, Adam, and Blake. Had, like, better experience. Um, I think it was different because they all, it was never like a, you're not ready or you weren't good. It was more of just like a, come back and try again. And I was like, okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> like, it's all good. Uh, but no, they all had like different critiques. Like one was like, wow, I could hear myself in your voice. And then the other was, you have such a, a mature voice for your age. We had no clue. Like it was just, it was all positive things. So like I left and I was like, I did what I needed to do. And it was a great experience. And are there really people in a, another room, like your family waiting to see? Oh you? yeah. They, my mom's here. She was literally, they were literally like 30 feet behind me, behind like, you know, the little barrier wall stage, uh, and they were just chilling there. And then as soon as I walked off the stage, they were right there to greet me. So, yeah, it's one of those moments where you're kind of like, y'all just look at each other and you're like, let's go eat. Like, you know, that's how that's how I cope. My entire family, we cope by eating. So <laughs> it was literally, no, we straight up went right to my house. My mom made some pasta and that was like, that was a done deal. All right, so what's next for you? What do you want to accomplish? What, what, what do you foresee for you in the future? Long term or short term? I just, I want to make people feel something. That's like my ultimate goal. Like if I made you hate me, if I made you love me, if I made you want to punch me, I don't care what it is, as long as I made you feel something. Because I feel like we're in a world now where people try to shut down their emotions and not talk about things or they don't know how to. And that's how I've been my entire life. But music was always that one thing for me that opened my mouth while getting my thoughts out, but in a way that I didn't feel vulnerable or insecure, but I felt more empowered. And I just want my music to do that for everybody else. So long term, I just want to affect people. <laughs>